let's bow for our invocation. Father, we praise you. We join with the song and sing. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. We thank you for your goodness, for your might and your mercy. You de deserve the honor and the glory. And you alone are worthy of being in charge of the universe. I accept our thanks today, Lord, as we reflect on last year and as we, this morning, sing about your glory. Behold our God. We pray for those who are here today for various reasons that they may have a greater appreciation of your might and your mercy, your love and your kindness. Accept our praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, please turn to someone next to you and shout if you can. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Anybody feels deafened? If, if that didn't happen, then I'm not quite sure how lowly praise was. But let's praise God today as we behold our God. Like Sister Pat and Brother Rand to join me in singing. We've been standing for the first song, hymn 16. Immortal, invisible, God only wise. stand if you want to. Him 32, after which we'll have the scripture reading. Again, we celebrate God's glory. A lot of Things around us seem to take away our attention at times, but really the glory belongs to God. I sing the mighty power of God. <laughs> Oh, uh -huh. 
That's what we read. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and marked off the heavens with his palm, enclosed the dust of the earth in a measure, and weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a bath? Who has measured the spirit of the Lord, or what man shows him his gospel? Whom did he consult, and who made him understand? Who taught him the path of justice, and taught him knowledge, and showed him the way of understanding? Behold, the nations are like a drop from a bucket, and are accounted as the dust on the scales. Behold, he takes up the coastlands like fine dust. Lebanon would not suffice for fuel, nor are its feet enough for a burnt offering. All the nations are as nothing before him. They are accounted by him as less than nothing. Amen. The magnitude of God. Let's remain humble as we look around and we see things that look like they're powerful, but God is in ultimate control. You may be seated. Hymn 82, prayers to the Lord. Prayers to the Lord, hymn 82.
brother Chris Boyce if he would come and lead us in prayer. Let's all stand as we go to prayer. Good morning, church. Happy New Year. Let us pray. Father, thank you so very much for bringing us through the previous year and allowing us to see a brand new year. Father, I pray that as we go through this year, that you will continue to bless, continue to watch over us as you've done all those many years before. And Father, for however many more years there are to come, Father, I pray that you'll continue to be there for us. Father, I pray for those who may be sick, who may not be able to make it out this morning. Father, I pray you'll continue to watch over them, heal them according to your precious will. But I pray that those who may not even know you as Lord and Savior, that they will turn to your son and say, Jesus, I believe that you are God's son. Come into my heart and help me to do what is right. Forgive me of all my sins. But I pray that they will make this promise today. We do not have tomorrow put down, Father. We do not know what will happen in the future. But Father, we are glad that you are our God. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Chris. You may be seated. We'll now ask our secretary to come and give us the announcements. Good morning and a happy new year to those I haven't wished a happy new year yet. And you have one extra day this year. Did you know that? <laughs> well, we want to welcome some special people. First of all, our first time visitors, we have Nikki Lorraine from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Where are you? Good to have you. We have Eusine Blain from Haggard Hall. Good to have you. Any other first time visitors who's, who did not? Fill out a card. Did I see another hand? Ah, yes. And where are you from? Hello, so good. Good to have you. Our, our neighbor, one of our neighbors. Okay, we are going to sing the welcome song for them. And also, we are going to be uh, welcoming back our sister Pat's son who surprised her. Her son John surprised her. She didn't know he was coming. And he surprised her by coming in for, was it Christmas? For, oh, on all years. <laughs> uh, so Stan, let us sing the welcome song for our first time visitors and, and others. <laughs> So welcome And a special welcome back to our please say uh, to our sister Pam Kelman, who was welcoming the others. Uh, we are so glad to, to see you here with us and wish you continued healing. And also, we have the Paul family uh, who participated in, our, in the installation service of the Paul family over here. Uh, we, we welcome you. And our birthdays. Today is the birthday of Bertram Hoyt, one of our tech people at the back. Birthday. Happy birthday. And we're going to sing the birthday song for him, as well as for those celebrating this week. Tomorrow, Christopher Voice, Pauline Williams, who that is the mother of our sister Lorna Ward and Jenny Thompson, who will be 99. And so let's pray that she reaches that magic number. Uh, on Wednesday, we have Margot Greenwich and Patrick Skeet. 
On Thursday, our sister Joy Banfield. On Friday, Joyce Wells, Danica Knight. And on Saturday, Judean Mitchell. So a whole week of birthdays. Let's sing the birthday song for all of them, especially for Bertrand. <laughs> And the decorations are the, <coughs> we had a wedding here, so that's why the church is decorated, not for you. <laughs> now, I'm sure our sister Lorna will want to remind you to bring in your pet bottles because there's money in those bottles. So as you collect your pet bottles and other drink bottles, please remember to bring them in and remove the covers, please, and pass them on to either our Sister Lorna or Sister Lucy Critchlow. I believe the daily bread, this is your last chance to get the daily bread. <laughs> oh, it's not the last chance. Well, they're still available at $12 each from our Sister Manning. Now, we, want, we have a date, a very important date that we want you to save, and we are giving you, you know, when people are, you get a save the date for somebody's wedding. Well, we're having a save the date for our fun day on Saturday, April the 4th. Save the date. Saturday, April the 4th, our fun day. Now, a key was found in the grass, uh, if you look at your key ring or whatever and you notice you're missing a key, I hope it's not a house key, uh, I have the key so you can come and identify it uh, and collect it afterwards. We have two vacancies, one for cleaner and admin assistant, and next week we will have the details uh, to put up on the notice board. Now for the rest of the notices, on at six o'clock this evening, there will be our evening service. On Tuesday at six, there will be a Sunday school teachers meeting. Wednesday, 7.30, our prayer meeting. The choir is on holiday, so there's no choir practice. And then on Friday, we are having uh, the youth meeting Starting out the new year on a good footing, the youth will be meeting at 7 o'clock on Friday. And then on Saturday at 9.30, our sister Lucy and her team would like you to come out and help clean up the interior of the container. That is Saturday, 9.30. Clean up crew to come out, as many of you who can come and help with that task. Many hands make light work, they say, or too many cooks spoil the broth. Let's go with the other one. Many hands make light work. And then next Sunday, 9.30 on su Sunday school as usual, 10.40 morning worship, and at 6 o'clock our evening service. Those are the notices for the week. Do have a blessed week. Sister Celeste. Certainly, the many hands make leg like, work. She said something about broth as well, uh, about cooks and broth. So, I don't know if you're going to have food and, 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 and you know? Oh. So just trying to think in case there was soup or something being served for the um, trip. Um, <laughs> certainly, want to wish a uh, welcome to our, our Pauls. Sorry, we didn't have notice enough to give you a chance to um, do your thing now, sis. <laughs> we enjoyed her music so much last time, and for those who are hooked on to YesFM, is that right? Life FM. 
that we here at Christy Paul given us a nice place to be able to do. So thank you for coming. We hope that you enjoy this morning with us. Thank all of you for making this morning, delivering your choice of church to worship at. Um, you've got the announcement, but we're here every week. So please come back again next week and the week thereafter and the week thereafter until Christmas and beyond. Yes. Amen. We're going to ask now our ushers if they would um, wait on you to collect the offering. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your love and your mercy. We thank you again that we could just say thanks to you, Lord, for your goodness over the past year. Thank you for the many blessings and many ways of health, jobs, finances, emotional, family, and the list can go on. Today, Lord, as we bring some of our resources to you, we just pray that you would bless them and may they be spent, Lord, to your honor and to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. The song that the choir is about to sing, the whole of God, is also the theme for our church for the year, as you've seen it come up on the screen pretty regular. In it, we are trying to show you how magnificent, magnificent our God is uh, as we show him to you by song and words, behold our God.
Amen. We have really started to set the stage for what the year will look like. And in due course, we trust that every member will be familiar with the song and will at some point perhaps be asked to come and sing it. But we want to indeed celebrate the theme, Behold Our God. Before we hear from our pastor during this morning's word, we're going to ask you to stand with us and sing a popular song, How Great Thou Art. Now let's sing it with the greatness it deserves. Amen? Him in all one, how great thou art. Let's all stand as we prepare for the word this morning.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, what wonderful singing. Thank you so much, Deacon Tyrone, for leading us in worship. Thank you so much, choir. Thank you to our accompaniment this morning. It's good to be in God's house, amen? Uh, blessed New Year to you. I think you'll pick up right away uh, that uh, I've been battling a little bit of uh, cold and uh, flu. It's been a rough couple of days, but God is good, right? Uh, that's a cold day, so, all right? Uh, take a pound all and pray and get over it, all right? So, <laughs> yeah, so we praise God for allowing us to be here this morning on first Sunday, all right? Uh, that's a blessing. That's, that's nothing to take uh, for granted, of course, and it's good to see all of you here making that uh, effort to be out here uh, this morning. Our theme, as you've seen uh, repeatedly this morning, is... Behold our God. And uh, that is something that the Lord had laid on my heart um, really uh, around September, October last year. Uh, and, and just seeing him confer confirm that in many uh, aspects of my life and in my Bible reading and my interactions. I'm just convinced that this is what the Lord would have us to do as a church this year. Uh, is it okay to preach about God in church? I had to check that on uh, all years night just to make sure that everybody was cool with that. Uh, I hope you are cool with preaching and hearing about God, all right? Uh, so we are going to behold the Lord. What does it mean to behold? It means to look attentively. It means to uh, pay attention. Some of you um, are really good at paying attention to the clock. Uh, so <laughs> you have your wristwatch or whatnot and... Uh, you're all ready to go. Sandy passes up here at 11.30. You've got to get out here by 12. We've got communion. We've got a lot to do, right? Beholding God takes a while. Uh, how big is God? <laughs> right, it's very. Uh, absolutely. Uh, and so uh, we're going to take our time with this. Uh, can, uh, let me just tell you that you cannot exhaust all there is to know about God in a year. You can't. You can't do it in five years. You can't do it in 10, 20, 40. For all eternity, we'll be learning about God. Are you excited about that? Amen. We cannot exhaust all there is to know about our God. And so uh, our text this morning, uh, as we read earlier, is taken from Isaiah chapter 40. So if you have your Bible, go ahead and grab it. I'm here in Isaiah chapter 40. This word is going to really help me this morning. And we're going to see here from, we read from verse 12, but let's just go up to verse 6, where it speaks about this voice. I don't know, it's on, kind of weird. Uh, a voice says, cry. And I said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord merely does what? Blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God shall do what? Because we know these miraculous, marvelous truths, the prophet tells us to go up on a high mountain and herald this good news. Lift up your voice, verse 9, with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold the Lord God comes with might. His arm rules for him. And that's a, a mighty ruling arm. Uh, I don't know, I see uh, some of our young men looking kind of buff, I think, for the new year. All right? And uh, not calling any names, but when I grow up, I want to be like you, all right? And so we see here that there's this, this is the Lord's arm. It is a mighty ruling arm. <laughs> He's going to win any arm wrestling contest. There is no match for God, yes? But why I highlight that, highlight that? Well, he is a mighty ruling God with his strong arm. Let's read on. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. Verse 11. He will tend to his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. 
So he has this strong, mighty ruling arm. It's an arm that rules, but also it is an arm that loves and cares and gathers. This is our God. A God who is strong and mighty, but also compassionate and kind. And he cares for me and he cares for you too. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are young or with young. Let's pray. Gracious God in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity that uh, this particular day provides it, being the Lord day, but Lord's day, but also the first day of this year. We thank you that we can stand here at the beginning of the year with somewhat of a clean slate, that we can uh, position ourselves to focus on you and on you alone. We thank you that we don't have to guess at who you are and what you are about. We have much to feast on in your holy word, the Bible. And so, Father, we ask that by your spirit, you will help us to uh, lock in, to uh, understand, to retain, to love, to appreciate, to cherish everything that your word says about you this morning. That it would change the way we live our lives, having a better view of God. Father, we pray that there will be much for us to praise you for as a result of our time here this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We miss things. I've already told you that uh, those of you who are husbands, make sure you pay attention to your uh, wife's changes. All right? So when she gets her hair done, make sure you say your hair looks lovely. When she gets her nails done, make sure you show some appreciation or else. <laughs> we miss things. Uh, when I was in school um, a few years back, uh, this is secondary school, I made friends with a guy who had come in from, I think he was from Canada. I remember that because one time we were having a PE, physical education, and the, the, the coach, the, the, the PE teacher asked uh, the, the young man, let's call him Steve, uh, what, Steve, what's your favorite sport? And Steve is in balmy Barbados and shouts out ice hockey. <laughs> and we were at a loss as how we were going to help Steve, all right? But I remember being in chemistry class, and me and Steve, we became best friends, best buds. And in chemistry class, and all the teachers are going to frown at me right now, we were in the back of that chemistry class, and, and we were just having the time of our lives not doing chemistry. Uh, we paid little attention to what was going on, and all the titrations, and all this mixing of this thing and the next thing, and balancing equations, and so on. Uh, just completely missed me and my friend. But the egg ended up being on my face because then, before CXCs came around, he went back to Canada. <laughs> and let me tell you something. I did not realize how much I truly missed in that class. So much so that I had to resort, and this is so terrible, I had to go to lessons after. Oh, man. If you paid attention, then you wouldn't have to pay, Right? Man. And so we miss things. Uh, there's been a movement for a while now um, to uh, put some pressure on us to pay attention when we're driving, right? So if you're caught, if you're caught, you should not use your cell phone while driving. But I gotta say, if you're caught, because people just operate as if, right? If you're caught using your cell phone while driving, the fine is how much? How much? I really can't remember asking for two. Two thousand? Too much money. <laughs> okay? So let's not do that. But what can happen is so, so, so you, can, you can miss things in the home, and that may mean that you um, might not get your favorite meal for a couple of months. Uh, you, can, you can miss things at school, which may mean some trouble for getting a job later. You can miss things on the road. What happens if you miss something on the road? It can, be, it can be very serious, right? It could even be dead. Folks, what happens if we miss things about God? What happens if we miss things about the creator of the entire universe? Do you think that it's important to pay attention to God? Folks, we miss things. We have in the word this morning a reminder for all of us 
that we ought to pay attention. We ought to behold our God. And our aspect that we're going to zero in on this morning for a very few uh, moments is beholding our God in creation. And so the song that was sung speaks to this, as this aspect of beholding our God in creation and asks some really pertinent questions Questions that the answer is supposed to jump to your mind, but he does not explicitly sit, give you the answer. So in verse 12 of Isaiah chapter 40, the prophet asks, Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? And marked off the heavens with a span, enclosed the dust of the earth in a measure, and weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance. Folks, what, have he, what is he speaking of there? Uh, we know that our planet is made up of mostly water and just and land, right? So, so in looking at all of creation, he is summarizing and saying, God owns all of the water and all of the land. What would you find above the waters? You'd find the heavens. What would you find above the lands? The mountains, right? And so he says, for as high as... For as far as you can see this way, and as far as high up as you can think or see, God owns all of it. Amen? Amen. He talks about then a God who is a God of, in totality. He's not God of part and, and not this over here. God owns it all. What does it mean then to hold all of these things in the hollow of your hand? You can hold up your hand right now. It's the hollow of your hand. Right? So the entire planet, the worlds that we see are in the hollow of God's hand. What does that speak to? That speaks to an easy competence. God is so powerful. He is so big in his majesty, in his greatness, and his glory that these things that look ginormous to us are held in the palm of his hand. And folks, this is a challenge that we have because when we are faced with difficulties in our lives, like the context here, we know the Israelites are, are about to enter into a time of tremendous difficulty. The prophet is warning them about impending doom. And these problems that we face in our lives, we see them and that's all we can see. And our problems are so big and so huge and so large that somehow we miss God. We miss God. Things. Anybody else checking time still? Anybody checking time? But what happened here? Didn't I start with a watch on? What happened to it? So even as I'm telling you to pay attention, you're missing things. Come on now. You didn't think I was a magician, huh? Didn't know that part. Left it off the resume. No, God wants us to pay attention to Him. And to understand that he is bigger than all of our challenges, all of our fears, all of our despondencies. I love this so much. Look at verse 14. The prophet asks, whom did he consult? And who made him understand? And this is a deliberate question because Isaiah knows that the Babylonian false god, I'm not going to call his name, the false god that they claim is responsible for our creation... He had to ask for permission from another Babylonian false god in order to proceed with his creation. And so, and so the, the, the prophet is saying, look, we live in this context where the world is so confused. God needs no advice from anybody. He does not consult with anyone. He does not need to ask anybody what they think. He is the one true creator God and he makes correct judgments all the time, on time, every time. Amen. Are you willing to trust your life to the God who makes correct judgments all the time, on time, every time? Yes. Yeah, me. I want him to have free course in my life. Because I know if I get my hands on it, I'm going to mess it up. 2020 looks like a clean slate. But let me tell you, if it's in my hands, I'm going to drop it. Actually, you're looking at this uh, little device I have here. The reason I have it standing up right now is because yesterday after the wedding, I dropped it. And it cracked here now, so now I can't power it on. So I got to leave the keyboard attached so that I could turn it on by the keys. 
You see what happens when you leave things in my hands? <laughs> Christmas 2020, uh, right? Let's take note. Thank you. Right, but, but, but God doesn't ever, God does not ever drop the tablet. God does not ever drop the ball. He is always in control all of the time. And we need to remember that going on throughout this year. It goes on to say that he doesn't consult verse, uh, verse 15. We're moving on. Behold, the nations are like what? Hold on a minute. The nations are like a drop from a bucket. Really? Now, hold on a minute. Let's get this context. So, I, I, I think I got this right. So, when I was uh, in the state studying, I was in Greenville, South Carolina. And I remember looking this up. I think I got this right. I didn't check it. Uh, I prepared for this, but bar the whole, the entire island of Barbados fits into Greenville two and a half times. Greenville is just a, one city in South Carolina. You got Anderson, you got Spartanburg, you got all the different cities. All right? So that's just, and that's just one state in America. And then there are how many states in America? And that's only one nation. The Bible says, all the nations are like what to God? A drop in a bucket. Do you understand the greatness and majesty, majesty and magnitude of our God? Amen. You're going to kind of say yes, and you're going to kind of say no. <laughs> yeah, you, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. We can't fathom that greatness. But we ought to try. The scripture invites us to consider this as our God. We use reference points to get us there. I saw me reading that they're like a drop of a bucket. They are counted as dust on the scales. You know, you're going, you're going town, you're, you're going to get your, your ground provisions and so on. And, and, and people will say, you got to wipe off the scale, right? So that you don't got an extra thing added to my, to my price. <laughs> huh? And that, that part that you wipe off, that's it. They're like the dust on, that you just wipe, wipe off off your scale. I mean, that is, that is astounding to me. Uh, what this going? Behold, he takes up the coastlands like fine dust. <laughs> Verse sixteen: Lebanon, the whole of Lebanon would not suffice for fuel, nor its beasts enough for burnt offering. So you understand sacrifice. You understand sacrifice on the altar. You take the animal, you put it on the altar, you light it up, and that's a burnt offering, right? Right now, y'all paying attention to what's going on in Australia. Anybody follow that? Tremendous carnage. I just read, just grab a quick stat here. So uh, the Australian bush fire season has burned an estimated 6.3 million hectares. I can't fathom that. That's 60 million acres. So I was asking Deacon, we are right now sitting on how many acres? We're sitting on four, three, four acres here. Three, four acres here at the church. Hello, 16 million. I like that though. Everybody go, Shh. 16 million acres destroyed over 2,500 buildings. They killed 25 people. There's a lot. There's a lot. And, and, and scripture is saying a similar thing here for us, right? That, that if, if you were to offer a sacrifice to God and you lit up the entire uh, land of Lebanon and all of the animals therein and made that sacrifice to God, it would not be enough. That is our big God. We serve a big God. See, a sacrifice of that magnitude is not worthy, but if you know your Bible, then if you go to Isaiah 53, we're going to read about that. Yo, you would read about the sacrifice that is worthy. Isaiah 53, you normally turn there around Easter time. The suffering servant who is Jesus. That's a sacrifice that's worthy. Amen. All the world set aflame, all the animals offered up could not be enough, could not su uh, suffice to meet God's requirement. But Jesus did. Praise God for him. So we find ourselves to be before this God, uh, preachers who are quite 
are insignificant. Because if we're going to be, if the nations are dust, then the people that live in the nations are how small? <laughs> right? Um, I don't know uh, if you will be, um, had this experience, but how many of you catch van? You call it van in your life? One, two of you, okay? All right. Um, so uh, there was a time in my life where that was the way to get to school. And, um, and I was, you know, basically a, a lanky fella, right? So I would, uh, when I catch the, the ZR van, which is the white van, for those who don't know, um, I would go down in the corner, uh, the corner, the back of the van, okay? And uh, that would always be an experience. I would go there because that would give me the most room for my knees, all right? Uh, and so he would, the conductor, you know how it goes, he would send as many people down in the back as possible because he needs to make as much profit as possible. So he would say, tall man, tall man, tall man, small up yourself. <laughs> like, how, how much smaller do you want me to go in the corner of this van? Smaller yourself there, tall man. And then, and then now that's the piece de resistance is then you put down that one seat and then you throw it the back now and it, that back seat lashed me in my knees. So now I got my knees in the back of somebody's head, right? And I small up myself in the back of this van. Listen, folks, when we, when we are in the presence of Almighty God, some of us need to learn to small up yourself. We come before the Lord with a pompous, prideful attitude as if God owes us something because we are so awesome that we were, uh, we were at church on all years night and church for a Sunday, God. Hmm, you see me? Huh? No, we need to have... And I mean, when we do behold our God, we get right in our rightful place. When we see God as he truly is, he humbles us, it humbles us. As humility is the way forward, folks. In God's kingdom, the way up is down. And so those who would exalt themselves, God reduces them to nothing. And God takes the humble and lifts them up. That's how God operates. And so we find much here for us to digest in uh, verse 18 through to verse 20. We see, to whom then will you liken God? Or what likeness compare with him? An idol? This, this, is, this is preposterous. All right, so we, you replace God for something that you make. A craftsman casts it, a goldsmith overlays it with gold, casts it for silver chains. Be careful what you're putting on. He, uh, uh, he who is too impoverished from offering chooses wood that will not rot. He seeks out a, all of this effort. A skillful craftsman. All of this effort to set up what? An idol that can't move. Is dead. It's a non-entity. But yet, folks, whether we're going to craft them out of the silver and gold, or whether we're going to hold up a person or a thing or a, 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 a goal as an idol in our lives, God is saying how preposterous. How, how dare you do something so silly? How dare you take a created thing and exalt it above the creator? How dare you do that? It makes no sense. The word used here for God is the, God, is the word that is, it, 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 it speaks to God in his most transcendent form. So it's a big word. Okay. So, okay. so if you're talking about God, there are some words that we have to use that you have to know. Okay. So you know when you, you, when you have your special field uh, for the young people, um, y'all have, y'all play video games Fortnite. Y'all know it was a mini. It was a mini. Y'all know it was a mini. Right. Y'all people going, but the other people going like, what is, what is that? Right? Um, th those, those who do cooking, technical term in cooking is what? Um, uh, sorry? Saute. Huh? But if you ask me what saute is, that, that's, that could be wealth mean boiled or put in microwave. So there are technical terms that we need to know, right? Yes? You agree? So God's transcendence speaks to his, his, the attribute of himself that he is far from us. Listen, listen we are not on God's level. Listen, God is not like us. 
It says in Psalm 150, one of the errors that humankind has made is that we thought that God was like us. And if God is like us, that means that he must like what we do. Huh? And so we just do what we do when you kind of include God after. We ask God to bless the things that we want to do. We got that all backwards, in it? Yeah. We, got, we got our prayer lives all switched up and mixed up. All right? So we, we, we say, God, I want to go and do this. We ask that. I ask that you bless this. <laughs> Rather than, Lord, what would you? Come on. Let's switch that around. When we behold our God, we get the order right. So we see God's greatness then. Uh, he's transcendent. He's, that means he's absolute deity. He rules over everything. He is the unique God. And his purposes are forever. He rules everything. So verse 21 asks you, wait. Do you not know? Do you not hear? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundation of the earth? It is he who sits Above the circle of the earth, pause, flat earth people, not really sure, right? Bible says circle, every sense. And <laughs> inhabitants are like what? Y'all come for tell the wrong grasshoppers? <laughs> I don't know why people are afraid of what what grasshoppers can do you? If they could do something, don't tell me because I am not afraid of them. <laughs> I see people running from grasshoppers and crickets like crazy. It just go, ah, it's my dominion, right? Uh, but, <laughs> right? but, 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 but we are like that. But then it says, who stretches out heavens like a curtain? Hmm? I washed curtains yesterday. Um, this is long. Remember, tell you, what is it? Uh, pick down the house, right? Right. So we still put it back up. Uh, so I washed curtains yesterday and I had to hang them up to dry. So I put the curtains on a hanger and hang them up. So. That, you know, I hang up curtains. I asked the Lord. She, she was able to see that. We had a meeting and everybody laughing at my background because I got curtains hanging up on a hanger. All right? On, on the curtain rod. All right? Uh, uh, but, but, but look at God. So, so God's house is not like my little squeeze up place. God's house, what's he do? He stretches out what? Like a curtain. You understand God? My God says, you know, I'm going to live here. You know what he does? He doesn't go down to Swan Street and go to the curtain. He says, heaven. I said, this is my curtain. Hold on a minute. And spreads the, them. Same heavens. Like what? A tank. A tank to, how big do you have to be to live in a tank the size of heaven? Huh? That's where God lives. He's enthroned on the heavens, folks. Huh? Not like my little small place, or we, or we, we, we drive through houses, we drive through certain communities and say, wow, that's a big house. No, it's not. <laughs> my God lives in the heavens. Yeah. Hold on a minute. That's my heavenly father. He got a place for me. That's a spot for you too. Huh? So let's not be so temporal minded with the things down here. Huh? Huh? Let, me, let me start to behave like if we're going somewhere for once, folks. Huh? We're too tied up. We're too concerned about the temporal. But when we behold our God, a lot of things get in order. All these temporal pursuits distract us from what's really important, which is knowing God. You are here on this earth to know God. He is supreme in rule and authority. Verses 21 to 24 tell us, and then we read that he is the one who is the God of all creation, as has been a reminder to us. Let's jump then now to the end, since time is against us. Verse 27, why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right, ha uh, uh, and my right is, is disregarded by my God? Verse 28, have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is what? Everlasting God. Everlasting God. He is. This speaks to his eternity. Yes? The creator of the ends of the earth speaks to his creativity. He does not faint or grow weary. That speaks to his self-sufficiency. Come on. 
His understanding is unsearchable. That speaks to his wisdom. Folks, we serve a God who is eternal, who is creator, who does not get tired. You know who's get tired? We get tired. Some of you tired this morning. Some of you still recovering from Christmas. In fact, the text goes on to tell us that, verse 29, for those who are tired here this morning, for those who are more than tired, but you're, you feel burdened under the weight of just doing life. What does he do? Verse 29, he gives power to the king. Amen? Amen. Listen, God is able to empower you. Right? When you are fatigued, yes, but when life really hits you hard, whether that is emotionally, problems with family, man, those things can really get to you. It seems like the people that are closest to you, there's annoy the most. Huh? I preach not I preach Okay, let's check in. All right? Our, our, our financial struggle or our work, it's whatever it is, God gives power to the faint. And to him who has no might, what does he do? Are you glad you serve a God like that? Huh? Even youth, verse 30, you shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. Uh, I missed it, but the young people went on an outing uh, late last year. And I was told they went on a hike. I was doing some other activity for the young people, so, right? Not, right? So my, I got a, a valid excuse. And I got a voice note um, from all of them. And I broke down just, in, just my belly was hurting me laughing at these young people. They were on the hike, and they were, Pastor Paul, we dying. <laughs> well, how come you leave us out here? You were supposed to come with us. I bleed in. <laughs> I serious, that's, I know, Nick, that's legit. That was the voice note that I got. I was dying. These ones who are young and strong and all the energy, what happened to them? They fit. And the weary, and some of them falling down exhausted. Huh? And, and, and the young men, and the, 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 the youths here speak to those who are in their prime. You know, when speaking in your prime, right? What Jordan in his prime. You ever watched Michael Jordan in his prime? But you know, he got tired. What's the signature thing with Michael Jordan? Every, every time he's holding his shorts, and you know, Michael Jordan gets tired. But God never goes weary. He never, you know, we get tired, we get tired of listening to one another, right? She, uh, <laughs> see the phone ring, oh, no. <laughs> but God doesn't get tired when you get on your knees and say, dear Heavenly Father. Huh? He doesn't get tired of that. He's glad to hear from his children. Huh? Praise God for his Faithfulness. He does not get tired. Verse 31. But they who wait for the Lord. Wait patience and trust. Wait patience and trust. Those who wait for the Lord shall walk. Renew their strength. Read it with me. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Behold our God. Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. That your grace is sufficient, your word is strong, quick, powerful, alive. We can trust what you say. We have experienced it for ourselves, and there's much more for us to see and to hear about you, O oh God. Help us never to be so distracted that we take our eyes off of beholding you. Help us to fix our eyes on you and on Jesus by the Spirit's power. Father, we desire this year to get closer to you. And it's something that we often say, but we want to do that by the means through which you have prescribed, which is engaging your word daily. Every moment of every day, we want to be super saturated with your word and to be following it and to be cleansing our way with it. So, Lord God, we thank you that is able to break up the follow ground, is able to convict, is able to instruct, is able to correct, is able to reprove and rebuke, Lord God. And we know, Lord, that your way is 
right. Your way is perfect. You will never put us wrong. You will never drop the ball. Father, we thank you that you are a big God and you are able to take care of every single need that we have, especially the need of forgiveness for our sin and our need for a Savior. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for his self-sacrifice. Thank you, Lord, that we can trust him for our soul's salvation. We can trust him for eternal life. We can trust him for kingdom living now and after. Father, we praise your precious name and help us as we go on to continue to behold you, our God. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand. We'll sing a selection and then transition into Let's all stand together, folks. We sing, Fairest Lord Jesus, as we behold his majesty, his beauty, his splendor, a marvelous hymn. Let us seated we transition into our first lord's supper for the year and this is a blessed occasion to be able to do this together amen, amen. we think of beholding our god and the god who sits on the heavens the one who rules from above i'm mindful of matthew chapter 3 where we uh, encounter John the Baptist uh, baptizing Jesus and we hear this voice from above the voice of God 
This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And then in Matthew chapter 17, the transfiguration, we have this awesome display of the glory of God just for a moment where we see a glimpse of God's glory, Jesus transformed for a moment. And we have the same declaration. This is my beloved son, hear him. So the God who sits in the heavens says, hear my son, Jesus. And his son, Jesus, gave us this ordinance to observe. Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. And so to obey God is to follow what Jesus has specified here for us to do. And so as by, by way of reminder, we read then 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And we spoke last time of that need for the inward look. Uh, well, our context this morning is an upward look. And we look to God who rules everything. And we see ourselves in our rightful place. And we read that whoever, therefore, eats the bread and drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. So let a person examine himself then and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many of you are weak and ill and some of you have died. But if we judge ourselves truly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. So what we do this morning, we invite all of you who are believers in Jesus Christ to partake. Uh, it may be that uh, you have not yet followed the Lord in believer's baptism, but you would like to do so, please partake. If it is that... Uh, for some reason, you are, you know that you're not quite where you should be with the Lord. There's an opportunity to pray and to make it right with him before this uh, ordinance is observed. And so we invite you to do that as well. So that the Lord may get all of the glory and all of the praise from what we do. Let us bow forward of prayer. God in heaven, we thank you so much for this opportunity. An opportunity to honor our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by doing this in remembrance of him. We thank you that he is risen and he uh, sits and rules on high right now at the right hand of God. And he makes an intercession for us. We praise you that he ever lives. We thank you, Lord, that his self-sacrifice means that we can have complete forgiveness of sins. We thank you, Lord, that there's nothing that we can do to make ourselves righteous. We need only trust in Jesus for the one, as the one who is able to set us free. And so, Father, we thank you for the freedom to observe this together. We ask, Lord, for your blessing on the elements as we partake. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Amen.
the side view, you'll uh, receive the cups. If you want to retain yours, you can do that. And we'll also uh, receive the second offering for the sick and the shut-ins at this time. very much for your participation. Um, I was just reminded that on Saturday we will also be breaking down this lovely display. So if you haven't had your Christmas shops yet, you may have a few minutes right after the session to do that because um, that's it for Christmas 2019-20. I think I got that. All right. Um, Yeah. 
Shouts of his coming. The sleeping shall rise from the slumbering place. And
Thank you. God bless you all throughout the year 2020. Amen. You serve a great, big, wonderful God. Don't wait till it's too late then to recognize that you could have been serving him more and respecting him some more. He's powerful. He's great. He's wonderful. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Brother Ryan. The choir will now do the benediction. We'll ask you to stand, and after that, we'll dismiss. God bless. <laughs>